Kuzampo and welcome to this special program. I'm Sharab Dorji and I have with me the Chief Executive Officer of the Druk Holding and Investments, Ujwal Deep Dahal. We'll be talking about uh, the diversity of DHI's investments, Bhutan's venture into cryptocurrency mining or digital assets mining, and uh, the DHI's recent partnership with Biddeer Technologies Group. Thank you so much, sir, for taking the time to talk to us. Uh, I'm sure people or viewers might be wanting to know about uh, the DHI and uh, of course we know DHI as the investment arm, arm, arm of the government, but what does DHI actually do? Right, uh, thank you so much. Thank you for having me here. And uh, as you rightly mentioned, uh, DHI is the investment arm of the Royal Government of Bhutan. Um, uh, it's been about 16 years of operations of DHI through a Royal Charter in 2007. And uh, DHI's major objective is to invest for the benefit uh, of the future generations. So if I sum it up in one, uh, one sentence. Right? So how uh, prudently we invest, uh, looking at opportunities of the future, becomes a very core mandate for us as we, as we build our portfolio of investments that we, that we, uh, you know, uh, uh, that we design today. Uh, the portfolio of investments uh, could be, has to be national, as well as now with the 21st century economy and the opportunity that it provides, uh, our portfolio has to be uh, also very international. Um, just to give a very quick background, of course we have uh, 22 different companies in various different shareholdings. Um, uh, uh, some of the very strategic sectors like energy, airlines, uh, banking sectors uh, become a core a portfolio of our uh, asset on which we are expected to provide the public services, but at the same time also operate in a very commercial and efficient manner to, to uh, you know, serve the purpose of the companies in terms of providing the public service and also being commercially viable in the long run. I think that's very important for DHI. Um, uh, and, and of course, uh, to invest for the future, looking at opportunities for the future. No. Yeah. So investment being large part of what the DHI does, um, of course it contributes a lot to the government's revenue. So um, when you talk about investment, what sort of investment are we talking about? Uh, with, uh, with the opportunities and the challenges that we realize, yes. it's important for us to diversify our portfolio of investments. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned, we have a lot of uh, uh, companies in Bhutan, uh, which we provide public service with, but also operate at a very commercial level mm -hmm. uh, to make it sustainable. Uh, the kind of investment that you talked about is also to explore, uh, you know, to build a dynamic uh, and a vibrant and a progressive portfolio. We are looking at digital assets, mm -hmm. but I do want to mention that digital asset is one part of the larger portfolio that we are building. Mm -hmm. We are looking at, uh, you know, uh, uh, using technology, the exponential growth of technology that's happening around the world. We might have missed out on the telecom revolution, the dot-com revolution, but uh, the exponential growth of technology with the computing power that has really, uh, uh, you know, grown, provides all of us to be innovators today. You know, even, even, even with a simple phone, uh, we, we can actually calculate anything we want, right? That kind of uh, opportunity is what we have. So our investment portfolio, we are really looking to see how we can build investments, but also build human capital and research and development in areas such as uh, blockchain, uh, in areas such as metaverse, in areas uh, in AI and ML to build applications and products and services that actually solve the real problems of the world at the end yes. of the day. But sir, talking about digital assets, now uh, most of our viewers might know that Bhutan has been making headlines in the global media uh, about our investments in the digital assets uh, mining and also why particularly digital assets? Why the shift in investments from the regular investment model which is dependent on our uh, 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 currency model and also why shift to the digital assets mining? One, I think, uh, most important is the fundamentals of what runs these digital assets. Mm -hmm. Again, as a, as a point of uh, a case in point, mm -hmm. digital asset also, again, forms a very uh, important, mm -hmm. but one of the components of a larger investment portfolio. Mm -hmm. But what's, uh, what's in digital asset? A digital asset could be Bitcoin, mm -hmm. uh, or, or it could be any of the blockchain algorithms which can be used to build certain tokens 
or other applications, which I'll talk about a bit later. Yes. But what blockchain, that why, why are we so interested in digital asset uh, is in terms of what it solves. Mm -hmm. So let's just take a step back and talk about, um, let's, say, let's say we'll talk about money, mm -hmm. right? So when we talk about money, it has like basically three functions. Mm -hmm. It is a unit of account. It provides a, uh, you know, a, me a value, a store of value. Yeah. And, and of course, it has, it's a medium of exchange. Uh, if you talk about Bitcoin, it provides all fundamentally all these three functions, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, and how is, for example, the digital asset Bitcoin able to provide all these three functions of money mm -hmm. is because of the underlying technology blockchain. And that's what we are very excited and interested about. So talking about the digital assets, uh, we have come to know through international media and through the recent uh, press release issued by the DHI that uh, the DHI is actually mining bitcoins, right? So why particular bitcoin? Because there are uh, thousands of other um, um, digital assets to mine. So why bitcoin? So um, as we have uh, put out the uh, statement also. Uh, Bitcoin, if you look at the whole market of uh, digital asset uh, market, it's, uh, as it stands today, maybe it's about 1.5 to $2 trillion. Yes. Um, Bitcoin probably today is about 700 to $800 billion of uh, market cap yes. uh, as we look at it. So Bitcoin has really evolved mm -hmm. and proven itself as a store of value. Mm -hmm. um, of course, we have seen it rise from you know, six or eight cents to about sixty-nine thousand uh, dollars, but and there is a lot of volatility as it uh, you know uh, in its journey for last 10, 15 years from since two thousand eight to today, mm -hmm. there's a lot of volatility. But one important aspect over the time horizon that we see is uh, the, uh, the the value is always rising. Yes. Right? So that's one of the reasons because it's a strong store of value, yes. uh, and and uh, also the mining aspect is in a way the least risk uh, vertical of, of the whole ecosystem of uh, you know, uh, getting into the digital asset. So that's one of the reasons. Nasla, we'll talk about uh, what blockchain technology really is towards the end of our program. But moving on, um, we uh, mostly, uh, even us in the media, came to know about uh, the DHI's venture into uh, digital assets mining through international media and uh, a lot of articles has been, uh, have been covered. So um, they've been uh, basically writing about how this has been kept quiet, uh, be kept secret from the public and also uh, if you could uh, shed some light on that. Um, I mean, uh, the way I look at it is uh, any investments uh, that uh, we do, mm -hmm. There are certain, uh, you know, business competitiveness, uh, and and also certain uh, non-disclosure agreements we sign with certain uh, providers and uh, parties to ensure that the business is competitive. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's uh, that's one of the reasons. But having said that, if you really look at uh, what's available in the public blockchain, is uh, uh, you know uh, an open ledger. Yes. Uh, I, I really don't see that being a secret. So I really don't know how the headline "secret" comes in there. Uh, yes, we have been working, uh, you know, on on the vertical of mining um, digital assets, which is Bitcoin. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we are, you know, uh, utilizing the uh, uh, power. We are importing certain equipments that's required, and all these are done very transparently, right? So, uh, but at the same time, what's important for us is uh, digital assets and uh, this whole business. Is it is important to operate in a way uh, because we are operating in a sandbox regulation. We are in the beginning, of course, we are trying anything that we enter first time. Mm -hmm. There is an element of risk, yes. right? But at the same time, what I can also mention is because we did work on a sandbox regulation mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and did work on this uh, project, we are also able to, uh, you know, partner with uh, our NASDAQ uh, listed company, Bidyear that uh, we would be talking about later. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, our experience in the digital asset space of mining uh, has also given us the opportunity to work with a NASDAQ listed company, to partner rather with NASDAQ listed company to uh, expand the horizon in the digital asset yes, space. Sir. Since you talked about uh, sandbox regulation and also what sort of uh, framework is the DHI uh, operating on when it comes to its uh, digital assets mining? So, 
I, I would uh, like to mention that, of course, we work on a sandbox regulation um, given by our central bank. Yes. And uh, I, would, uh, I would say that uh, our central bank is one of the most progressive central banks in the world, mm -hmm. having provided this opportunity to work on a sandbox regulation uh, to invest in this vertical uh, is very progressive. Yes. And because of this investment, uh, the, the, the leverage and the opportunity we have in diversifying into various use cases of blockchain, uh, use cases of digital asset manifesting in the way we have done our national digital identity or uh, some of the applications we are developing with blockchain on um, uh, carbon trading assets, uh, the NFT uh, projects that we want to get into, mm -hmm. or for that matter, uh, you know, uh, some of the AI and ML algorithms that we're using in the drone industry yes. has been possible because of these, uh, you know, uh, experimentation and project investments. Lesla, and uh, I'm sure now talking about, uh, we have already established that, yes, uh, DHI is venturing to digital assets and all. So I'm sure our viewers might want to know when did DHI start this uh, venture? And all? Yeah, yeah um, uh, if you look at our uh, press release or the statement that we released, uh, what's important, what was important for us is we actually entered at the right time. Yes. When, yes. Oh, when the Bitcoin prices were around or below $5,000. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, so it has given us the space and time mm -hmm. to quickly learn the, uh, learn the new industry. Mm -hmm. Uh, but at the same time, quickly scale to an extent that we are comfortable because when we started at 5,000, of course, it reached to 69,000, came back to about $15,000 per BTC, and today it stands around hovering around 30K. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it has given us the whole bandwidth of markets mm -hmm. and given us the experience uh, to manage this uh, business and this industry. That's low. And uh, well, going back to the international reports, I will be looking at the report, first report published by Forbes, actually. They mentioned about uh, the DHI lending money from these crypto lending companies like Celsius and BlockFi. So maybe if you could uh, detail uh, how much uh, the, uh, the numbers, maybe. So uh, as, I've, uh, also, as I was also quoted there, which was what I, we had replied, I had replied to Forbes, is that uh, the case with BlockFi was settled. Yes. And uh, what I do want to mention is that the overall net portfolio that we have in digital asset uh, is positive as of date. Yes. So, uh, you know, we, uh, what's important in investments and opportunity or risks in investment is that we have a good risk framework. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so we were operating on a certain risk framework. If our risk framework doesn't allow to take certain amount of risk, uh, we are also limited in returns accordingly. Nice. So we have a very balanced portfolio and a very uh, robust risk management framework. So we work around that framework. Yes. And, uh, and, and, uh, and, and the matter with BlockFi, as I have mentioned, is settled. Yes. And, our uh, and our portfolio is net positive at this yes. point. Yes. yes. So now, um, since the matter with BlockFi is... Uh, uh, settled. I would like to move on and talk about, since you mentioned about the risks involved, mm -hmm. the, the market itself as we see it is really volatile. Uh, if we uh, see the trends uh, tweet by the owner of Twitter mm -hmm. and SpaceX and Tesla, Elon Musk can uh, actually uh, have a lot of impact on how the market functions. It can uh, skyrocket the prices of uh, uh, cryptocurrency or um, I mean crash one, one of the currencies and also uh, what sort of uh, uh, volatility are we talking about when it comes to Bitcoin and DHIs or Bhutan's investment? Um, because the investment portfolio that we have built is balanced, mm -hmm. the volatility does not impact everything yes. because that's the whole, uh, whole uh, if I may say, engineering of building a balanced portfolio. But within that small component of digital asset, uh, we are very aware of, of the volatility in the market. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, let's, let's also look at it from this angle. The traditional stock markets and bonds market are also volatile, yes. but that has been established for a century plus, mm -hmm. right? So there is some stability in those, uh, in those, uh, in those markets. Uh, whereas the digital asset market, the crypto market is not even 12 years old. Mm -hmm. Right, or, or actually the core of the market may be much lesser than 10 years old. Um, so when we study the data of this 10 years uh, and, and see how the market 
may move. It's very difficult, to be honest. But, um, but there is data for the last 10 years or so for about the crypto market. So we look at that very closely and, and, and invest in a way uh, within our risk framework structure to ensure that uh, we, uh, we, we invest to the extent that overall portfolio is balanced. That's, like, that's, that's what is very important for us. Natla, moving on to the criticism that was drawn, and if we uh, stay at home, the criticism was that this investment, this large scale, millions of dollars of investment into digital assets mining is actually what caused the forex uh, depletion. So maybe if you could uh, uh, share some light on that. Um, uh, so as it stands today, uh, the investments uh, has been made by DHI, right? So, and we, our business standings, of our business standings to, to the agreements that we have uh, for, for the Forex uh, as a bond uh, is in very good standing. We haven't, of course, defaulted anything. In fact, we are well in progress to actually, uh, you know, liquidate our bonds well before time uh, of the agreements that we have had. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so it's very important for us to understand that, uh, for us to realize that this is a business that we have started mm -hmm. and we do not default to, to any of the agreements that we have. And I can say very confidently at this point, you know, uh, those, those, uh, those are our top priorities and those are in very good standing at this point. So uh, if you look at the financial standing of this whole investment, how does it look, at, look like at this moment? Positive, yes. positive. And of course we had crypto winter last year. Yes. So uh, we do go through different cycles. It also happens in traditional mar markets. Mm -hmm. But one thing I do want to really mention is DHI is for the long term. So we're not investing for, uh, you know, uh, getting quick returns, which we can do on a certain small portfolio, yes. but our strategic investment strategy is a long term because we objective, as we talked about, is a long term benefit. Mm -hmm. So it's very important for us in every cycle to be carefully looking at with advices from experts around the world uh, to invest in strategic assets, which may give us long term returns. Yes. So I'm not too worried about uh, you know temporary volatility. Again, going back to the uh, market. Mm -hmm. Uh, on the long run, if you look at it, it's always on the rise. Right. So, yeah, I think that's what gives us very, uh, the confidence uh, in terms of being in this area of business. Yes, yes. One of the many criticisms that uh, involves digital assets mining is its, it's, it's negative impact, impact to the environment and uh, there have been a lot of environmental activists across the globe who have been uh, uh, really fighting against uh, digital asset mining and it's the same for Bhutan. There have been a lot of criticism that has been drawn that uh, huge uh, power consumption that uh, required by the uh, mining computers and all the setup that are there and also in Bhutan, how does that play out? So, uh, of course, the very straight answer is that we have hydropower, which is clean, clean energy, mm -hmm. right? So we are actually using clean energy to, uh, to mine bitcoins um, or, or the digital assets that yes. we're using. But a step back mm -hmm. or, uh, or a step forward is, the question is also, why do you want to spend so much of energy mm -hmm. to, to mine something? Which, uh, which has now proven to have had a value, to have a value mm -hmm. uh, over the, the last 10, 15 years, mm -hmm. is that spending this energy, as we call proof of work, actually provides that trust and that security mm -hmm. in that asset that you are building. So a parallel to that would be, why do we provide so much of design, engineering, uh, printing uh, our currency notes? Mm -hmm. A lot of money spent there. Uh, but then we need to do that so that there is value and there is security and there is trust on that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the physical note. Mm -hmm. So it's very similarly here to have that trust and that security and the immutability, uh, the energy spent to solve certain mathematical equation and cryptographically put it into a ledger. Yes. And hence, again, coming back, of course, our power is green. Mm -hmm. So we are very well suited mm -hmm. apart from our environment, which is cool. Mm -hmm where we don't need to uh, use a lot of power to cool down the machines. No. So uh, physically, practically, I think we're very well suited to build that trust and to build that security in a digital token. Um, we'll move on now to uh, DHI's partnership with BitDeer Technologies Group. If you can start by who, uh, understanding who BitDeer is. 
time. So, uh, Bidya uh, is is a Nasdaq listed company, uh, and uh, and it is headquartered in Singapore. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of the best in the in this industry space in terms of uh, mining digital asset at this point in time. And uh, because, as I mentioned, because of our small experience in uh, in this vertical uh, in the past, uh, we were able to negotiate, talk, collaborate uh, with Bidya. And uh, build up a partnership as we, uh, you know, signed and released the statement, joint statement yesterday. Uh, I, I see something. This this is something that we can use as a industry uh, academy, a collaboration in Bhutan mm -hmm. to build our talent pipeline to feed into the technology industry that we aspire to build moving forward. So, uh, specifically, what would Bidia be bringing into the country? Mm -hmm. At at this point in time, uh, as we said, that we are looking to raise about uh, five hundred million dollars uh, with all international uh, investors that we're looking. Um, this is only on paper right now. We have built a partnership with Bidia to do uh, international uh, fundraising uh, uh, to the extent to you know five hundred million dollars. Uh, the project in Bhutan, the investment of this five hundred million dollar in Bhutan, will take time, uh, and. Uh, and, and what we'll be building is we'll be strengthening the electrical grid yes. uh, uh, and, and also building the uh, digital asset mining facilities. Mm -hmm. right? So there'll be a lot of economic activities, there'll be a lot of job creation. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, of course, uh, there, there would be a lot of revenue streams uh, from this partnership for us and importantly in foreign currency. So those are the upsides that we are talking about when it comes to Bhutan as a partner in this project. Um, what can Bhutan offer to this project? Uh, in fact, what Bhutan can offer, of course, we offer green energy, yes. right? So we contribute to building a digital asset which is green, yes. number one. We offer that. Uh, and, and of course, uh, we also offer a, a small capacity that we have built over the last couple of years uh, to this partnership. Uh, and hence, Bidya is also, in their statement also, they have mentioned that they are uh, happy to partner with Bhutan because there is already a, uh, uh, some level of understanding and experience and knowledge in this industry. Uh, so that's, those are immediate things that we can offer uh, from our side. Yeah. So we came to know that Bidya is one of the leading crypto mining companies uh, uh, around the world. They have their headquarters in Singapore, like Sir mentioned, and uh, mining sites in the US and several places in the US and even in Norway. So uh, why bid there in particular? A couple of things. Yeah. Firstly, they are a listed company, yeah. so that gives us confidence mm -hmm. because it's very important for us, mm -hmm. the investments that eventually comes into Bhutan yes. is uh, through the full uh, you know, KYC KYC customers, right? Uh, the customers or the investors who come in mm -hmm. have to be uh, have to be known. Mm -hmm. We should know where the money is coming from, mm -hmm. and from that perspective, Bidya being listed it, uh, as a listed company, it has its own standards that it needs to meet. And beyond that, what we have also uh, ensured in our partnership uh, is that you know the full KYC will be disclosed, and you know uh, so we know exactly what kind of uh, investors are getting into. Uh, building this uh, project for us. So since it is going to be fed using clean, green energy, and uh, we are talking about hydropower, mm -hmm. so of course uh, uh, we know this by fact that in the lean winter months we have to import the uh, energy that we, when it, the domestic demand is not met through the hydropower plants that we have in the country. So in the dry season, how does this partnership will pan out? What's the equation? So uh, it's interesting. Wh one of the reasons we got very interested uh, to actually partner with Bidya is also that as the fund, uh, we are, uh, from the business perspective, mm -hmm. we are ready to shut down the farm during the dry season. Yes. Right? So that's something that we have discussed. And uh, the business operations within certain months of the time when we have enough hydropower uh, is, is something that we are ready to do as a business operation. So, uh, but ap apart from that, if there is any energy available, uh, 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 our priority is the domestic and the uh, industry. It's always, if you have seen in uh, the uh, DHI's venture also, the least priority during the winter is given to the DHI's venture yes. in digital asset. So it'll be very similar. I think what the confidence we want to provide is the domestic supply is the most important uh, aspect for us. And we have been able to strike that deal with uh, collaboration with Bidya. So 
very happy about that actually. That's right. So maybe the one question that keep lingering in my mind is what if crypto fails? What, what if uh, digital assets mining as a market fails? The way I see this is uh, it's been, it, it, at one point I think it touched about a $3 trillion market cap mm -hmm. with crypto. It's, came down, it's now around $1.52 trillion. Mm -hmm. uh, for something like that to fail, mm -hmm. uh, what are the probabil probabilities, right? Uh, so we'll have to probably look at those. Uh, I know it's early days for crypto, it's early days for digital asset, uh, but the data seems uh, very uh, promising. I only see the younger generation around the world only investing more in, uh, in digital assets uh, and beyond, right? So uh, that also gives a very interesting perspective of how digital asset or the whole technology uh, industry will grow fueled by the younger generation with a lot of handing over of the asset from the older generation will invest in their future. Uh, all right, so now uh, talking about DHI, uh, we've uh, covered quite extensively about digital assets and also moving forward, what can we uh, expect from DHI? What we look forward to uh, in strategizing to build is how do we leverage the exponential growth of technology that's happening around the world. As I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, uh, we don't want to miss this technological revolution. And when I say we don't want to miss it, what do we do about it? So we look at it from a very fundamental way of uh, building talent pipeline. I think that's fundamental. But at the same time, we are doing 20 to 25 different projects. Uh, national digital identity actually is, is one of the manifestation of our research projects to have built the first uh, self-sovereign ID uh, framework, uh, uh, you know, uh, digital identity. Why I talk about digital identity is this is, a, again, a product and a service mm -hmm. uh, which solves our fundamental problem here, but this is also a product and a service that we can take international, right, uh, which, uh, which solves problems around the globe. Mm -hmm. And we are the first sovereign government to actually uh, do this on, uh, on a self-sovereign identity philosophy, mm -hmm. which actually means a lot for us. But not just to zoom down into NDI, NDI is just one of the projects, right? Uh, and uh, we are also working on various other different industry verticals, be it the metaverse, uh, be it the drone industry, be it looking at it from the battery industry, and how can we innovate? All put together, working as a proof of concept research to build an industry around it in very close collaboration with the universities that we have to bring in talent pipeline. Um, the other thing I do want to mention for DHI to move forward uh, is that we have to look at investments in certain fundamental foundational groundworks like energy, like connectivity. Uh, so it's very important for us to look at how can we diversify our hydropower to wind, maybe more, more to solar. Uh, and other technologies of energy generation, uh, and also f ensure that we bring in investments for accelerated hydropower development. Uh, with close collaboration with India, we have been working on hydropower, and we want to accelerate that. Uh, beyond that, we have been in talks with uh, uh, various uh, uh, you know, uh, companies around the world in terms of how we can produce demand in Bhutan. Could we do, for example, uh, high performance computing center. If you look at ChatGPT, the amount of data that needs to be churned behind ChatGPT, mm -hmm. there will be an. Exp I feel that there will be an exponential growth in, uh, in in computing centers requirement around the world. Mm -hmm. We have the uh, green hydro, uh, so we should def definitely look at bringing in high performance computing center uh, as a way of increasing our demand. So basically, looking at in innovation and technology to build. A, you know, in innovation culture to build an innovation economy, but at the same time very cognizant to build our investments in the traditional fundamental uh, groundwork sectors to fuel the innovation ecosystem. Uh, and with, uh, with whole of this, we are very cognizant to build a very balanced uh, investment portfolio for DHI to meet the objectives of DHI moving forward. That's right. So um, we have been talking about the blo blockchain technology, crypto and CBDC, and even the upcoming project that is the national digital identity. Uh, it's, uh, it's scheduled to roll out in June as far as uh, I, I understand. Um, so. All of it is based on the blockchain technology. So I said we will talk about uh, a little bit about what blockchain technology really is. So maybe if you could drum it down and then uh, tell us briefly about what that technology is. Mm -hmm. So it's not difficult to understand blockchain. When you get into the intricacies of programming it, then we require some skills, right? 
But uh, let's take a very quick example, if, if we may. Uh, you know, so what uh, blockchain is nothing but just a ledger where you say this is debited, this is credited. Today we started with a, a register where we wrote Mr. X gave Mr. Y 10 Neutrum, for example. We wrote it somewhere. That's a ledger. Uh, technology evolved. We started writing it in a server. Right. So today the banking system writes that I owe you 10 neutrum in a server mm -hmm. and we have trust on that. Yes. And I actually owe you, then I need to pay. Mm -hmm. And then the record, the ledger gets uh, you know, updated. Mm -hmm. Now what blockchain, if you take that ledger to a blockchain, then that block, blockchain could be public. Yes. And then it could be verified. Today the server, the banking server, which says that I owe you 10 neutrum mm -hmm. is verified and kept, but is in Theoretically, it is in access of maybe a couple of people mm -hmm. and the system. We trust that system. Mm -hmm. It's working. But it's only within a couple of people and sub certain agencies. Whereas in blockchain, the moment the same ledger, which is basically the blockchain, is kept on a public, and then there are X number of nodes. Like for Bitcoin, there are uh, you know, 10,000 plus active nodes spread around the country which validates that particular transaction. Mm -hmm. That's why we say it's kind of immutable. So if you want to change that ledger, which is the, in the blockchain, that transaction uh, digital certificate in the blockchain, uh, you need that 50, at least 51% of those nodes with, which validated mm -hmm. to be changed, mm -hmm. which is at least at today's time, it's uh, not possible. Yes. Right? Yes. So that's, that's kind of it's just a ledger at the end, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, where it records transaction. So finally, maybe we'll come to an end by talking about uh, of course, crypto and digital assets. Should Bhutanese now go ahead and broaden their investment portfolio? So, what's your take well, on that? I, yeah. as, uh, as an individual or DHI, really cannot uh, talk about individual investments. Mm -hmm. um, but why, what I do encourage every individual mm -hmm. is to start looking at blockchain, start looking at the power of blockchain, the power of uh, artificial intelligence, and the power of machine learning. Uh, which is actually available on a click of a button with yes. all the things to, you can actually, this can run, uh, you know, any of the image processing algorithms to solve the interesting problems that we face. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would encourage people, everyone, uh, young and old, all of us to read, uh, to tinker with this technology. Um, but from the investment side, that's not something that I can, uh, I can advise uh, to, to an individual, of course. Right. Well, that's it. Uh, that was the CEO of to holding and investments, which will leave the hall, talking about Bhutan's uh, cryptocurrency or digital assets venture and the partnership uh, with bid tier technologies and all. I hope this program was able to clear some air yeah, surrounding uh, DHI's investments in digital assets mining and all. Of course, it was really valuable for me. So thank you so much. Thank you for your time and uh, see you next time.